Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 5 of the 2017 Singfield Cup. And this round saw one of the most brilliant, most wonderful moves of the tournament so far. We're going to have a look at the game between Vishwanathan Anand and Fabiano Caruana. Let's get into it. Anand was white, Caruana was black. Round 5 played on August 6th, 2017. C4 from Anand, E5 from Caruana, English opening. Knight C3, Knight F6, Knight F3, Knight C6, all knights are developed. G3, D5, C takes D5, Knight takes D5, the opening is really a reversed Sicilian dragon. So white is an extra tempo compared to the normal Sicilian dragon. Bishop g2, bishop c5, which is a new move at the top level. Knight b6 is the main move. Both players castled, and we can get into very complicated positions after knight takes e5. And you cannot take back that knight, because there's knight takes d5, and then white has just won a pawn. So after knight takes e5, you would have to take on c3. And now white can take on c6, counter-attacking the queen, but that's not very, not very good for white. So the best is b takes c3, knight takes e5, and then d4. All very complicated, Anand did not want to go into this. He played the move d3. Bishop b6, bishop d2, bishop g4, rook c1, Karana took on c3, Bishop takes back rook e8, b4, queen d6, and knight d2 on its way to the nice square on c4. Please note that black cannot take on b4, because then there is bishop takes, queen takes, rook c4, and that rook is forking queen and bishop, and white will win a piece. So after knight d2, Karana played queen h6, knight c4 as planned, and queen h5, attacking the pawn on e2. With both bishop and queen, it's only defended by the queen. Rook c2 to protect the pawn, rook ad8. Anand said afterwards that he looked at a ton of variations here and that he didn't like them very much. So he decided to kill the bishop on b6 to be able to play f2, f3. So knight takes b6 and Karana took back with the pawn. We all learned that we have to capture towards the center, but it doesn't apply to grandmasters. They know when capturing with the other pawn is better. a takes b6 would have been fine, but c takes b6 also makes sense as black can now challenge white over control of the open c file, which was in which was in white's hands. He was threatening to play b5 and then get pressure against the c7 pawn. That's why Kaurana took with the pawn, and now as planned, f3, kicking the bishop. Anand even went as far as calling his last two moves embarrassing, as it takes the energy out of the position, but he felt he had to do this to deal with black's threats. Bishop went back to e6, queen d2, b5, f4 to bring the bishop on g2 back to life, and the bishop returns to g4. Anand said he was surprised by this, he had expected e takes f4, rook takes f4, and then bishop d5, and he said white may be slightly better, but not much. Another move after rook takes f4 is f6, to give the queen a square on f7 in case white will harass her majesty with rook h4 or bishop f3. Black is very solid here, all his pieces are nicely into play. But the move from the game was bishop g4, and now Anand decides to give up his bishop pair. Bishop takes c6, again something that we are not taught to do, giving up such a beautiful bishop. But for concrete reasons, this was a good move. Karana took back, and f takes e5. White has won a pawn, the bishops are of opposite color, but white has a plan. He wants to push 
the pawn to e6 to open diagonal, the diagonal for the bishop on c3. And in opposite, with opposite colored bishops in endings, that is very drawish. But in a middle game, it really depends on who, ha who has an attack. And then opposite colored bishops can be very dangerous for the defender. Karana played f6. This doesn't work, but black's position is already quite tough. Anand took on f6. And rook takes e2. Looks very strong. Threatening queen h2. Checkmate. But Anand had seen all this. He played f7 check. And you cannot take with the queen. Because of rook takes f7. Rook takes d2. But then white has an in-between move. Rook takes g7 check. Protected by the bishop on c3. King f8. And then you can take back on d2, and white is a rook up. So after f7 check, the king went to f8, and bishop takes g7 check, a piece sacrifice. It's the most obvious and forcing move, but also the strongest in this case. King takes g7, and queen c3 check. Of course, we have to make sure all the moves are checked, because queen h2 checkmate is still in the position. And... Now, there are different options for black to deal with this check. You cannot go to g6 because queen f6 is checkmate. You cannot go to f8 either because of queen h8 check, king e7, and f8 queen check, and white wins. You can play queen e5, which is what Caruana should have played. Then the variation goes as follows. Rook takes e2. Queen takes queen, rook e8, queen d4 check, rook f2, queen takes b4, f8 queen check, queen takes, rook f takes f8, and rook takes d3. This variation was shown by Anand in the analysis after the game, and he said that he wasn't sure if he could win this. He said the technical task here is horrendous. And he even said that he may not be better. That's what Karana should have tried, but he missed something by playing after queen c3 check the rook to e5, interposing the rook. Because now we get one of the most beautiful moves ever seen. Definitely the most beautiful move of this tournament. Queen c3 to d4. I'll show you a little picture from the game. This is the position where Anand is going to play queen d4. He had seen the move many moves ago. He, he said afterwards he had seen the move before he played 22 e takes f6. And queen d4 was a 26 move. And Karana said afterwards that he had completely missed this move. It was clear from Anand's body language that he couldn't help himself to play queen d4 quickly. But he forced himself to check it one more time before playing the move. And then he played queen d4. Which is winning. Why is this such a strong move? Well, it does two things. It attacks the rook on d8. And it also gives the white rook from c2 access to the c5 square, as we will see. And taking the queen doesn't work. Rook takes d4. Leads to checkmate. f8 queen. Check. King g6. And queen f6 is checkmate. Playing the rook away to f8 doesn't work either. Because that rook on c2 has now access to the c5 square. Which wins because of the pin. White will win a rook. So what was left is queen g5. Which Karuana played in the game. But then also rook c5 was the winning move with the pin. One variation is queen e3 check, queen takes, rook takes, but then there is rook g5 check, king f8, and white is not interested in the bishop on g4, but plays rook g8 check, king e7, rook takes d8, king takes d8, and f8 with a new queen, and white wins. Karana did not go for that variation, he played after rook c5. Rook takes d4, he took the queen, but then there was f8, queen check, king g6, and queen 
F7 check. And Karana offered his hand in resignation. Let's see why he resigned. After Queen F7 check, the king has to go to H6. And we'll get checkmated. Rook F6 check. Queen takes, queen takes, king H5. Rook takes D5 check. Bishop F5. Queen takes F5 check. King H6 and queen G5 is checkmate. Wonderful game from Anand with this miracle move. Queen C3 to D4, putting the queen on prees. Anand was very happy, he said in the interview afterwards. He concluded by saying, today was nice, I'm very happy with it. Let's see how the world champion got on. Magnus Carlsen played black against Wesley So. This is the position after 23, queen d1 takes a pawn on d6. Material is equal, but black is a bit better because he could now infiltrate with his queen on e2. There's no back rank mate. White is not able to back rank mate black. And, doesn't have, and he doesn't have time to take the knight on d7 because there's queen takes f2 check. And then mate on g2. Wesley So played queen g3, which is really the only way to deal with the threats that black has. And the knight's move from Carlsen, knight f8, taking the knight out of the attack of the bishop on a4. And also there's an idea of knight f8 to e6 to f4 for the knight to join the attack. Rook e1 from Wesley So. He probably should have played bishop b3 instead, protecting the pawn on a2, because after c4 there is knight d4 attacking the queen, and a variation, a possible variation is queen d3, queen takes, bishop takes, and then bishop d1, and black is better, but the game goes on. Rook e1 was played by Wesley So, hitting the queen, but Carlsen had a very nice rook b1, pinning the rook. That rook had to be taken, and after bishop takes b1, the a pawn is lost. You cannot try and save the pawn with a3, because there's bishop e4, and you have to protect the knight with king g2, and then there is a move like h6 to take any back rank mates out of the equation, and then black will bring his knight into the attack. This is not playable for white. So Wesley So played bishop c6. Bishop takes a2. And the pawn on a7, although on its starting square, is now a very dangerous asset for black. Queen d6. And a very nice move from Carlsen. Queen c4. Guarding the c5 pawn, attacking the c3 pawn. Here So should have tried queen c7. And after queen takes c3, he can take the a7 pawn and play on. But he played the bad move, knight e5 instead. Carlsen took on c3. He is now two pawns up. His king is safe. And Wesley So resigned. Carlsen called his resignation somewhat premature. But there is not so much to do for white. He doesn't have any counterplay against black's king. He's just two pawns down. To show you one example, he can try play knight d7 to try and get some attack against the king. Because black just takes that knight, queen takes d7, and then g6, and the king on g8 is perfectly safe. And black, as said, is just simply two pawns up. And Wesley So did not want to continue this battle. Nice win from Carlsen, and these are the results. So Carlsen, we saw Anand Kairana, we saw... Vashe Lagraf, Aronian was a draw, as was Karyakin, Napomnici, and Nakamura and Svitler also made a draw. The standings, Vashe Lagraf still on top of the rankings, three and a half points, Anand and Carlsen at three. Vashe Lagraf and Anand are the only two players who have not lost a game yet in the 2017 Singfield Cup. Karana, Aronian and Karyakin half a point behind Anand and Carlsen. And four players on minus one. So Nakamura, Svitler and Nepomnici. Monday, August the 7th is a rest day for the players. So round six will be played on Tuesday the 8th of August. 
and I will be here afterwards to tell you what happened. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment. And if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media, clicking the share button on YouTube. I think this is a nice one to sh share with this beautiful Queen D4 move from Vishwanathan Anand. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box, as well as the link to the playlist of the Sinkfield Cup 2017, the earlier videos that I've made. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you very much for watching.